Good. Uh, and what this means is um, every type of atom um, only has a certain, the, uh, if you look at its emission spectrum, it only emits, say, certain colors and wavelengths. Every atom has certain colors and wavelengths that it emits based on the separation of its energy levels. This is why um, there, there used to be this argument back around 1900. People used to argue, is there anything that we can't figure out? Is there anything that we can't figure out? And someone said, well, we can never figure out what the stars are made of. Because if we tried to get too close to measure them, we'd get burnt up. Yeah. How can you measure what they're made of if you get burnt up? Um, but we can actually use their emission spectrums to figure out what they're made of. Because we can see um, what types of colors are being emitted. And then we can figure out by mathematics um, what the separation of their energy levels must be that's giving that emission of photons. Um, and then we can, uh, and we can figure out um, what, type, what the atomic number must have been originally that uh, would give us that emission spectrum. So this is a really powerful tool um, for figuring stuff out in astronomy, just looking at the emission spectrums and seeing what are the wavelengths that are being emitted. That tells you how far apart the energy levels are, and you can use that mathematically to figure out what type of atom you must be looking at in the first place. Out. Remember, this equation is in electron volts, but you can't use the flowchart until you're in joules, so you might have to do a unit conversion. Something else to point out, in real life this problem would have been harder because you wouldn't have already known all these energy levels. Right? We started by figuring out a bunch of energy levels, but in a real test problem, they would just say, find the frequency of the photon emitted when you go from n equals 3 to n equals 1, and then you have to start by actually calculating these energy levels using this formula. So um, when you do these problems, you should actually draw a picture like this. You should actually draw this picture of the energy levels and then calculate the energy levels that you need. And notice, we had to calculate, to do this problem, we'd have to do negative 1.5 and negative 13.6. But those are not the energies that we plug in here. The energy we plug in here is the difference between them. So it's very, it's very easy to, um, to get lazy and think that you can just find the energy. So this energy is not this energy. Yeah. This energy is not this energy. This is the energy of the different levels. And then the energy we plug into here is the energy change. The amount of energy, how the energy is changing when we go from one level so to another. the ground state of, of any single electron is 13.6? That was the other thing I wanted to mention. Remember, we were assuming all the time this is hydrogen. Yeah. If it wasn't hydrogen, there would have been a different Z, and all of these numbers would be different. Yeah. Although, actually, no, yeah. So that's right. So the ground state is only 13.6 for hydrogen. Say, for helium, it would be 27.2? Um, no, it would be 4 times 13.6, uh. right? So for hydrogen, it would be 13.6 times 2 squared. So that's the other point I wanted to make. All of these numbers are only when Z equals 1. So 13.6 times z squared equals the ground state energy? That's right, because for the ground state, you would plug in 1 for n. Uh, okay. So again, you can't just use this table. You can only use this, this little chart we made for hydrogen. So that was something else to point out. And again, this only works for one electron systems. Uh, the math is too hard for more than one electron, so you wouldn't really cover that in this course.